So Judge Benitez just held a hearing this morning in the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban case. In the hearing, he rejected the state of California's request to push this case out for another year and instead set this case to be resolved in the next couple months. So let's talk about this. But real quick before you jump into this video, if you agree that the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, Judge Benitez, or St. Benitez as he's known in California, is taking complete control of this Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban case. This morning, he held a hearing to determine where this case is going to go from here. California, in their briefs that they submitted to Judge Benitez this morning, and arguments that they submitted at the hearing this morning, were pushing for Judge Benitez to push this case out for at least until March of 2023. So they were asking for another year to try to come up with arguments in this case. So California was trying to push this out for even longer, and they said that they needed more time to come up with evidence to justify their ban. However, I found out through John Dillon, an attorney for SBC and the plaintiffs in this case, that Judge Benitez rejected that request and instead set this case to be resolved even sooner. Now, for those not aware, Miller v. Bonta is a challenge to the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. Under California Penal Code Section 30515, the state of California bans various types of firearms based on their characteristics. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine cannot have a flash hider, a collapsible stock, a forward vertical grip, and if it does, then the state of California defines it and calls it to be a so-called assault weapon, and the possession of that comes with a heavy criminal penalty, including felony charges. The Miller case was originally heard in the Southern District of California before Judge Roger T. Benitez. Many of you know him as St. Benitez. And in that original review of the case, Judge Benitez found that this case is an average case about average guns used in average ways for average purposes. In reaching his original decision, Judge Benitez used a standard of review that was just affirmed by the Supreme Court in Bruin. He looked at the text of the Second Amendment and the histories of our nation surrounding the Second Amendment to determine if the state's ban on these types of firearms is indeed constitutional. In fact, in reaching his original decision, he stated, a ban on modern rifles has no historical pedigree. Prior to the 1990s, there was no national history of banning weapons because they were equipped with furniture like pistol grips, collapsible stocks, flash hiders, flare launchers, or barrel shrouds. In fact, prior to California's 1989 ban, so-called assault weapons were lawfully manufactured, acquired, and possessed throughout the entire United States, he said. Because of that, he found that this ban is indeed unconstitutional. After he struck down the California assault weapons ban, he did issue a temporary stay on his own order that was set to terminate in 30 days. The temporary stay was in place for the state of California to seek a permanent stay from the Ninth Circuit and also to seek an appeal from the Ninth Circuit. Well, of course, the state of California did get granted both the appeal and the stay from the Ninth Circuit. Then this Miller case was put on hold because of a backlog of cases which were waiting on the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin decision from the Supreme Court. Also, I want to note real quick that I've heard some people mention multiple times that the Miller case was one of the cases that went up to the Supreme Court and was GVR'd by the Supreme Court, meaning grant vacated and remanded. That's incorrect. Miller was never actually even heard by a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit. This was elevated to the Ninth Circuit, but then sat behind a ton of other cases at the Ninth Circuit. I think some are getting the Miller case confused with the Duncan v. Bonta case, which deals with magazines in the state of California. The Duncan case was one of those cases that made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court and was ultimately GVR'd. So I just want to clear up some of that confusion because I've heard some people kind of getting those two cases confused. Now, once the Supreme Court issued the Bruin decision and they struck down the Ninth Circuit's use of the two-step approach and also affirmed that text as informed by history and tradition is the correct constitutional analysis, this case Miller, along with many others in the Ninth Circuit, finally got moving. In reaction to all of this, FPC through outside counsel filed a motion to lift the Ninth Circuit stay on that Benitez ruling and to also fast track review of this case at the Ninth Circuit level to finally get it heard by a three judge panel. While the state of California opposed that motion to lift the stay and instead pushed the Ninth Circuit to vacate Judge Benitez's original ruling and to have the case remanded back down to him for reconsideration. Typically, the state of California had no issue letting these types of Second Amendment cases run their way through the Ninth Circuit because in the past they could lean on the two step approach. And also the Ninth Circuit would always defer to their whole public interest arguments, but now California can't lean on any of that. So their tactic now is to try to stall these cases out for as long as possible to try to find out some sort of new argument that they can make. So this case was remanded back down to Judge Benitez by the Ninth Circuit, 
And now Judge Benitez has complete control of this case. And now that he has this case in his own hands, he requested additional briefing and scheduled a hearing for this morning. And a lot of people were speculating what would come out of this hearing. Well, we also received a brief this morning from the state of California, and their brief is very laughable. Their brief amounts to them asking and requesting from Judge Benitez for even more time to try to find historical evidence to support their ban. In fact, the state of California proposed to Judge Benitez that he push this case out for at least another year, at least till March of next year, 2023. In their brief, they argue, this analysis should not be rushed. Although defendants cannot provide a precise estimate of how much time would be needed to conduct a thorough identification and review of source materials at a general level, a historian conducting original research on primary sources materials would fairly expect to conduct many hours of work to yield several sentences of written historical analysis. As a practical matter, they state, most qualified historians would be unable to devote themselves to this endeavor full time on account of other research, teaching, and professional obligations. They go on to state that, to be clear, defendants do not seek to restart this case from scratch or inject needless delay, which that's laughable, in order to provide sufficient time to develop the supplemental historical record and conduct expert discovery before further proceedings on the merits, California respectfully proposes the following schedule. And then they outline an entire schedule and ultimately it would be resolved in March of 2023. So they're wanting another year to try to resolve this case and to come up with some sort of evidence to justify their ban. That was the brief that was filed this morning by the state of California. But we also knew that the parties would be attending a hearing this morning per an order from Judge Benitez. To this point, I haven't seen anything hit the docket yet. It's probably gonna come at the end of the day, maybe even after I film this video. Uh, but since I didn't hear anything, I decided to reach out to John Dillon. He's one of the attorneys for this case to see if anything noteworthy came out of this hearing from Judge Benitez. And in fact, something really important did happen. He said that Judge Benitez denied the state's request for an additional discovery time. So he denied that year long proposal that the state of California wanted. Parties now have 45 days to submit supplemental briefs slash evidence of historical firearms regulations then 15 days for response briefs, then it looks like Judge Benitez is going to make his decision on this case. So that is really good news. Benitez is not going to let the state of California drag this out any longer. He just completely rejected their request for a year long proceeding and additional stall of this case. He's gonna be fair and procedurally allow for the proper briefings and arguments, mainly because he has to do that, because he has to do the things right, or else maybe there could be an appealable error that the state of California could request the Ninth Circuit to look at but he's gonna try to do this as quick as possible. So a total of 60 days to get all the briefs submitted, and then he's going to decide this case and decide what ultimately is gonna happen with this case. Is it constitutional or is it unconstitutional? And ultimately, I think we know how Judge Benitez is going to rule because he's already ruled this way in the past. Now, I also asked what Judge Benitez's general demeanor is like because I've never seen him in person. I've only read his writings. And I know a lot of you guys like me are probably interested in what Judge Benitez is actually like. The response that I got is that Judge Benitez was essentially having none of California's arguments and that he wants this issue resolved as quick as possible. He comes off as a fair judge and gives everyone an opportunity to speak, which is a big deal. He was also described as very logical and doesn't entertain any bad arguments. And also it seems like it's very clear that he is a thorough reader of everything that's submitted to him and that he really does take the time to think about all the arguments that are presented to him. So he comes off generally as a fair, logical and thorough judge, which is really all we want in these cases. That's what you would expect out of a judge, but sometimes that's harder than you would think trying to get out of a judge. So that is where the Miller v. Bonta California assault weapons ban currently stands. California wanted to solve this case out for another year, but that request was denied by Judge Benitez. Instead, Benitez has scheduled this case to be resolved in the next 60 days. So if we get any more information, I will let you all know. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer best of my ability. Also, like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel algorithm. rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this is with Built Barm Scholars, and this nation will be maintained Barm Scholars.